To all those people watching, I'd like to remind everyone that this video is not made for kids. It's for older fans and adults. Enjoy the fucking video! It was a busy time on the island of Sodor. A famous movie director was coming to film on the island. All the engines were excited, hoping they might be a part of it. At the sheds, all the engines were talking about it. They're sure to ask me to be a part of it, said James excitedly. You? scoffed Henry. Why would they choose you? Anyone else could do it better. We don't even know if they're going to ask any of us, said Emily. You shouldn't get your hopes up like that. Why else would they come to a railway then? grunted Gordon. May I have your attention please? said a voice. It was the fat controller with the famous director. The director here has news for you all. We have decided which of you engines will be taking part in the new film, announced the director. I knew it, quiet! Yes, well, continued the director, we have decided to use... Him, pointing to Murdoch. Murdoch was taken aback. Me, sir? He asked meekly. Why me? You're just what we're looking for, said the director. Strong, fast and quiet. We'll have you on set first thing tomorrow. That is if you want to join us. Murdoch thought for a moment. Yes, sir, he said nervously. Excellent. We'll see you tomorrow then. And the director left with the fat controller. But Murdoch was still uncertain. He confided his feelings to Emily that night. I don't know how to feel about this, he said. I've never been on camera before. You'll do fine, soothed Emily. Just keep to the script and everything will be alright. Murdoch still wasn't sure. The next morning he arrived on set and was told what to do. Men would be waiting for him on a bridge for him to pass with a long train of empty coaches and whistled loudly, smiling. A crew member waved the flag, someone shouted, ACTION! and Murdoch steamed off. At first, Murdoch was quite enjoying it. He sailed past fields and houses to people waving and soon drew in view of the bridge. Murdoch whistled like when he was told to, I did not know. Murdoch beamed, happy for it to be over. Then suddenly, he felt his driver by his brakes. Up ahead stood someone with a red flag. What's wrong? huffed Murdoch. That was perfect. They want us to go back, said the driver. Something must have gone wrong. Murdoch backed up to the bridge. The director was waving his arms and looked very cross. No, no, no! he shouted. That was all wrong! Too fast! Go slower next time! And a big smile! Big! Right, sir, Murdoch said with a fake grin. His driver drove him back and they started off again. They passed the bridge, but were stopped again. No, growled the director. Whistle louder and longer. Murdoch did it again. And again. And again. And every time the director stopped him, and he had to do it again. First he went too fast. Then... He went too slow again. Then he forgot to whistle. Then he whistled too much. When the evening sky rolled around, Murdoch was quite tired of smiling. The director groaned. All right, everyone, he said. That's a wrap for today. Let's hope we can get it right tomorrow. 
Murdoch rumbled silently all the way back to the sheds. He was still fuming when Emily arrived back. How was the film? she asked. Awful! shouted Murdoch. Who had happened? You wouldn't believe it. Shuffling around the yards if it's nobody's business. Men throwing orders and I'm always having to put on a stupid toothy grin. I think both my wheels and mouth need a break. Evidently not, Salty murmured. Murdoch continued long into the night complaining and complaining. Emily listened as long as she could, but eventually fell asleep. Murdoch returned to the set every day for a week. They filmed all sorts of scenes, but no matter what he did or how he did it, the director would find something wrong, and they have to do it all over again. Then at night he vent his frustrations to the other engines, but they much preferred when Murdoch was quiet. One by one they started to find somewhere else to sleep, until only Emily remained. It's not right, he said treating me like a toy, having me trudge back and forth all day, smiling like it's no bother. They can't treat me like this. Until the mat, mumbled Emily. She was tired and wanted to rest. You agreed to it after all. I agree to be part of a film, not a toy set, grunted Murdoch. Emily then lost patience. Oh, be quiet, she yawned. I work all day and come home only to hear you whining all night long. You've been pushing everyone else away with your complaining, and until you stop, I'm going to find somewhere else to sleep. Goodbye! And Emily left, leaving Murdoch all alone. The next day, Murdoch returned to set crosser than ever. He fumed towards the bridge with the coaches scowling. Smile, Murdoch, said the driver, but Murdoch didn't. Before Murdoch even cleared the bridge, he heard the director shrieking for them to stop. What now? yelled Murdoch as he ground to a halt. You need to smile, shouted the director. Do it again. But Murdoch had enough. No, he blurted out. I'm sick of this. I'm not a toy. I quit. You can't quit, said a crew member. Just watch me, huffed Murdoch. And nothing his driver, the fireman, the director, or any of the crew could do could make Murdoch start again. So they agreed to take him off set. Murdoch huffed away, hissing steam. Murdoch was taken back to the sheds. His crew spoke severely to him. You can stay here for the rest of the day, said the fireman sternly. And unless you're willing to apologize, you can spend tomorrow shunting trucks at the docks. Murdoch said nothing. He just sulked all night long. The next morning, his crew kept their word. Murdoch was taken to the docks to shunt trucks. He hated it, and the trucks laughing at him didn't help. He was shunting some trucks into a siding when Emily bustled in, looking very cross. I don't believe it! She snapped at Murdoch. I know, said Murdoch. Whatever was that film crew think? Not that, interrupted Emily. You! What's wrong with you quitting on them like that? Murdoch was surprised. But I... No tales. They asked you and you agreed. You can't back out now. But they didn't listen to me because you didn't tell them. If you have a problem, you should say it. Doesn't do any good to bottle everything up. Murdoch looked down at his buffers. He knew she was right. Before he could apologize, some boys arrived in the yard. Look! They cried. There's Murdoch! They say he's going to be in a film! Oh, is that right, Murdoch? asked Emily. Well, I, uh Murdoch stammered. Murdoch didn't want to go back to the film set, but he didn't want to disappoint people. Yes. Yes, I am. Wow! said the boys. Won't that be cool seeing one of our own on film? After the boys had left, Emily gave Murdoch a smug glance. I thought you weren't going back, she asked. Well, said Murdoch, something changed my mind. The next morning, Murdoch asked his crew to take him back. 
who agreed. Before Murdoch left, he spoke to Emily. Are you sure will be alright? I'm sure, smiled Emily. They'll listen as long as you tell them what's wrong, and just remember who you're doing this for. All right, said Murdoch, and thank you. Murdoch puffed back to the film set. The director was waiting for him. Before he could say anything, Murdoch cut him off. I know what you're going to say, sir, but please, I have something to say first. I'm sorry, sir, said Murdoch sheepishly, taking everyone by surprise. I didn't like how I was treated, but I had no right to quit like that, and I'm sorry I should have told you. I see, said the director. I'll happily do the shot, if you still want me, that is, sir, Murdoch admitted. Of course we do, laughed the director, and I'm sorry for how he treated you as well. It was wrong of me too. We'd be glad to have you back. Murdoch was overjoyed. As he neared the bridge, Murdoch put on a smile. But he secretly began to worry. But then he took a deep breath and thought of the boy smiling at the thought of him being on camera. And suddenly, Murdoch's smile became real. Murdoch whooshed through the bridge, whistling happily like he was told. As they passed, they looked back to see the director and the crew members cheering at them. Well done, boy, said the driver. Murdoch could only smile. They filmed long into the evening before calling it a day. When they were done, the crew celebrated with the driver and fireman, with Murdoch laughing along. A few months later, the director returned with the finished movie. Many engines came to see it. People pointed and cheered when Murdoch came rushing past on screen. Soon the film ended, but Murdoch and the others were surprised to see at the end a special message with a photo of him attached. Thank you, Murdoch, for being the real star, it said. Murdoch blushed as everyone clapped. That night, Murdoch apologised to the others. Well, Murdoch, asked Arthur, how was it being a movie star? It was nice, said Murdoch quietly as he drifted off to sleep. But I must say, it's much nicer being an engine, especially one with such good friends.